Shortly after midnight, 16 July, 1779, 1,300 men from the elite corps of light infantry had at last reached their destination. They were chosen by General George Washington to seize this important objective. These hand-picked combat veterans were the best the Americans had to offer. To command this corps, General Washington selected the young and daring mad Anthony Wayne. Wayne had already distinguished himself on the field of battle. Perched on the right bank of the Hudson River, 25 miles north of New York City, and commanding the King's Ferry, Stony Point at first glance seemed impregnable. The point, a peninsula jutting nearly a half mile into the Hudson River, was tipped with rocky crags and stood some 150 feet above the river. On the landward side was a swamp which flooded at high tide, thus making the point an island. British garrison, some 564 soldiers, controlled the river and the strategic line of communication between New York City and the New England states. The British regulars had spent roughly six weeks building formidable defenses, fortifying the place heavily by forming two lines of felled trees with sharpened branches and abatis, as well as three separate earthworks, the English detachment mounted 15 cannons of various calibers overlooking the Hudson. The garrison consisted of two companies of grenadiers from the 71st Highlanders, American Tories, a detachment of Royal Artillery to man the guns, and eight companies of the 17th Regiment of Foot. The fort was known as Little Gibraltar. To take the fort, Wayne proposed a sneak attack in total darkness. The final attack plan called for three columns attacking simultaneously. The center column, about 300 men, would distract the British from the real threats to the north and south. The northern column consisted of about 300 men, and the southern column, the main effort, numbered some 700. This southern column was led by General Wayne and included the regiment's commander, Colonel Christian Fabergé. Wayne also had in his service a French volunteer of extraordinary merit. Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury. Because of his leadership qualities, he commanded the 1st Battalion of the 1st Regiment in Wayne's Southern Column. Twenty minutes after midnight, Wayne's columns began the advance. The Southern Column advanced in three parts. The first group, the Forlorn Hope, led the assault and cleared away any obstructions they could. They were followed closely by a vanguard of 120 men and then the main body. Wayne traveled with the main body while his friend de Fleury marched with the vanguard. The column had no sooner sloshed into the waist deep water than Wayne's column was detected by the fort's British sentries. Suddenly, the defenders opened a hail of fire upon the attack force. Ordered not to fire, the Americans continued the advance with fixed bayonets. Men fell by the scores. In the face of tremendous and incessant musketry and cannon fire, the corps of light infantry continued their determined advance. Wayne and Febiger both quickly became casualties. The gallant Americans scrambled up the rocky slope as de Fleury assumed command of the southern column. First over the fort's parapet, de Fleury was followed by waves of American bayonets. Defenders and attackers met in the center of the enemy's works at the same instant. The fighting was close and deadly, sword and bayonet. Seizing the moment, de Fleury, the gallant engineer, rushed to the British colors and struck the garrison flag. Yelling the watchword, the fort's our own. Men followed, and in less than 30 minutes, the fort was in American hands. As for de Fleury, he won the accolades of the Continental Congress. 
the same men who had penned the Declaration of Independence and would later sign the Constitution. For his selfless service and intrepid behavior, the Continental Congress awarded a medal struck in his honor. The Army Engineer Association continues to honor individuals who render outstanding service to their organization by awarding worthy individuals reproductions of the medal given to Fleure by Congress. The Latin inscription reads, a memorial and reward for courage and boldness.